Hi people, just a very short video. As most of my followers know, I'm heavily into classical music, jazz and blues. Of course, I do collect all sorts of music on LP, uh, but I also tend to collect some eclectic formats. Um, and I thought I'd just quickly discuss one of those today. One of those formats is the reel-to-reel -reel format. It came out in the 50s and it was still quite popular until about the early 80s. Uh, hundreds, thousands of different titles were released, contemporary, blues, jazz, Broadway, classical, you name it, the genre was there. I tend to collect classical on it and I'm focused on a couple of labels at the moment. Uh, Dutch Gramophone is one of them, but the other one that's quite obscure is uh, Barclay Crocker. Now, these are considered the connoisseur of tapes, reel-to-reel -reel tapes for the time. They were released in the 70s and 80s in the US. Uh, they were released by a couple of guys who, Barclay and Crocker, who got together, convinced some of the, the top labels like Philips, Decca, Dutch Gramophone, Telefunken, so on and so on, to release their tapes. They released them at almost a, a one to one speed ratio. They created an original from the master tapes. And then that mas their master was then um, almost duplicated at one to one speed. So in effect, they put out these amazing quality tapes. They're four track. Um, for most reel to reel collectors, they like the two track, uh, which will usually run at 15 inches per second. These tapes run at seven and a half inches per second. But the quality on these are exceptional because of course they came, they, their master came from the original master. And of course they were copied at uh, almost one-to-one -one speeds. They m all employ uh, Dolby. So you, you, you don't have to play them with a Dolby decoder, but it helps uh, if you have a Dolby B decoder. And some of them were actually recorded with Dolby DX. If you have some of those, the sound quality is exceptional, especially for a four, four track tape. I've collected over the years about 100 of the titles for these tapes. I'll show you some in a moment. But of course, they released about 300, and 300 to 400 uh, recordings on the, the reel-to-reel -reel format. Uh, what makes them exceptional is that they are quality controlled. They release them in limited numbers. In some cases, they only released 100 copies thereabouts of of a particular title. I think the most that they released of any title was about a thousand. So they are highly sought after. They go for fairly good prices on eBay, but you can still pick them up cheaply, which is what I'm doing. And over time, I hope to collect more or less the complete series. It was the attention to detail which makes them exceptionally good items to collect. They always came with their own notes for the particular tape and item that they used. Uh, and they used something called Sonic Sentry. And that was a, for use on tapes that could read inaudible sounds that were impregnated onto the tape, which had a lot to do with the Dolby system, but also was helped to, for those tape players that had reverse play. Uh, my tape is a Pioneer. RT-709, it has the reversing tape component. Once it's played through from left to right, the tape will then automatically play from right to left. As I said, I've collected about a hundred or so of the titles. They come in a range of different boxes, more, all the same though. So they're identifiable simply by looking at the covers. They came in a different set of colours. I think they're usually blue, red or green. Ah, here's the off green. And the majority of the titles all featured uh, classical and 
some jazz and blues, and a few soundtracks. Uh, as I said, a variety of labels, uh, and a variety of music. Uh, we've got, um, this is some guitar trios, music of Wagner, music of Tchaikovsky, uh, the one that I was holding up earlier, music of Debussy, Prokofiev. Uh, this one is from Vanguard. I've looked this one up in particular. This one is of Schubert's Quintet, the Trout. Uh, there was only 160 copies of this made worldwide. So this is what makes them particularly uh, collectible for collectors. But also, um, as I said, the quality involved in producing just small numbers uh, at a ratio of duplication to almost one to one. It wasn't exactly one to one, but it was pretty close. Um, makes the tape sound exceptionally clear and precise. And the tapes really do come across vividly, especially on the player that I have, which I then um, feed through to a Dolby converter. To finish off very quickly, should I collect something like this? Well, it depends. You, you certainly need the equipment to play these reel-to-reels, uh, and that equipment is no longer produced. And to find equipment in really good condition can be difficult. Of course, the internet helps dramatically in that process. I came across my uh, reel-to-reel. It's, it's strong, it works well, it's a beast of a machine, and it's, and it's really well made. But of course, it was expensive to purchase. So once I had the machine, uh, thankfully nothing was wrong with it, nothing has gone wrong with it, um, but it eventually will need a service, as with most reel-to-reel players that came out in the 70s and 80s and 60s, especially the earlier ones. Uh, they usually need their caps replaced, which can be expensive. There are places on the internet where you can actually get this service done, or you can buy the components that you need for a particular reel-to-reel -reel player. And then of course you can take it to a technician and they'll put the caps in for you. They'll take the old ones out, put new ones in, and it, basically they'll refurbish it for you, clean it up, make it look snappy. And of course, once I had the machine up and running, I then decided I would explore it further with um, an addition of adding a Dolby decoder onto it, simply because the tapes from Barclay Crocker all feature um, Dolby, either Dolby DA or Dolby DX as part of that. And of course, that then adds another component to it because it reduces the extra tape hiss that is usually common and found on most tapes, even cassette tapes. Uh, but you'll find that with that decoder, which only set me back about 20 US dollars, uh, it, it's worked wonders because then it re reduces or removes entirely the, the extra hiss. And of course, it just brings a, an extra dynamic dimension to the tapes. <sighs> Seriously, they are so clear and so crystal that they're better than the best vinyl copy that you could find. Uh, but is it that what you want to do? Well, it depends. It's an expensive hobby. Um, and I've taken my time over the years to collect these. I didn't collect them all in one go. And it's taken me a while to collect a hundred of them or so in just um, in the time that I've been at this for the last four or five years. Of course, my aim is to try and collect the whole series, but of course that will probably add another 10, 15 years to the whole process. <laughs> but we'll see how we go. Another aspect to look at when you're collecting music and collecting old formats. I hope this has been interesting, informative. Let me know. Comments down the bottom. Please, no nasty ones. I'll catch you later. Bye.